Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to go over some of my favorite fun February themed activities that you can use in your K through two classroom. I've been really enjoying making these types of videos each month with just some fun themed seasonal activities. Last month I did one all about penguins and the month before that we did gingerbread man activities. So this month I wanted to focus on some February themes. As in my other videos, I have some ideas that you'll be able to take and use in your classroom right away. So if you are ready, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. I'm pretty sure when this video is going to go live, Groundhog's Day would have been yesterday. So you may already have done some Groundhog Day activities, but I do want to share since this is a February video that in my writing unit where I have my monthly themed writing activities and mini lessons, I have this Groundhog's Day one. I shared this book by Gail Gibbons uh, with a little directed drawing and I also shared a SciShow Kids video all about groundhogs, where students can learn a little bit more about groundhogs and then complete that little can have our nonfiction sheet. Also, I am going to skip over Valentine's Day in this video because next week I have an entire Valentine's Day video going out where I share some of my favorite read alouds. So in this video, we are going to focus on some other February themes. Specifically, I have a lot of ideas for the Winter Olympics, which happens to fall this year, along with the Super Bowl and just a couple other fun ones that fall in February. First up this February, it is 2022, so the Winter Olympics are happening this year. They start on February 4th, and every four years that is definitely a fun thing to bring up with your class. And there are so many different activities you can do involving the Winter Games that really kind of integrate those skills into your daily learning. So of course you'd want to introduce what the Winter Olympics are for your students, and you would explain how these are the best athletes from all these countries all over the world coming together for the seven different sports in the Winter Olympics. Now there is this video right here, an Aussie kids video, and you might want to just watch it yourself first just to get more information in a kid-friendly terms about the Olympic Games this year. The guy in this video is Australian and he goes over the seven different sports that are included in the games, how they're all on snow and ice, and he even talks about Bing Duen Duen, which I think the kids would really like. That's the Olympic mascot this year and it is a panda. And his name actually, Bing Duen Duen, Bing stands for ice and strength, talking about that kind of winter and Olympic part. And then Duen Duen means children in Mandarin. So even just going over a lot of the history of the Olympic Games and some of those cool fun facts from 2022's Olympic Games in Beijing would be very fun for your kids. Since the Olympic Games will be happening in real time throughout the month of February, it can be fun to watch little snippets of different competitions that happen, talk about the different medals, you know, the different symbols like the torch and the Olympic rings and what they mean, and just, you know, get students involved in such a big thing that's happening globally. Another fun way to talk about the Olympic Games is to read Tacky in the Winter Games. Now I love some tacky books and this doesn't, you know, go into the exact Olympics or mention any specific Olympic language, but it does talk a lot about the Winter Games. They do a little bobsledding, some of the games that are actually included in the Olympics, and it's just a fun little connection for a fiction piece. Now for your freebie this month, I wanted to bring in some integrated vocabulary so I made this little freebie right here with five different words that you can use to talk about the Olympic Games and the athletes. We have the words perseverance, pride, ceremony, strict, and effort. Now, if you watched my how to teach vocabulary video in K through two, then you will know vocabulary is much more important to students when it's integrated into what they're actually learning. So if you are talking about the Olympic athletes and the Olympians, then you can use these words, give students definitions of these words, have them use them in sentences, and it will just stick with them a lot better than just explaining them without any context. Now with this little freebie, along with the cards, I gave you some students friendly definitions, some example sentences for you to do a close activity with them. 
um, a couple worksheets and then I gave you some ideas to use like examples versus non examples. So here is an example with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. After learning what perseverance is, does this show an example of perseverance? Yes or no? And students can kind of talk about why they think that is. I will go ahead and link this whole vocabulary freebie down in the description below. You can definitely use these words on their own, but again, they're a little bit more meaningful when you can integrate it into your curriculum and what you're teaching them in school. Now, I also chose those words because they go really well with talking about the athletes in the Super Bowl, which happens every February instead of every four years, like the Winter Olympics. So I would definitely bring up the Super Bowl as well. Many of your students and their families here in the United States might watch the Super Bowl. So you can make connections between the athletes and their perseverance and their strict training schedules and kind of getting to that big championship at the end, which for the athletes in the Winter Games is the Olympics and for the football teams is is the Super Bowl. So I did pick those five words with both of these events in mind. Now for teaching about the Super Bowl, I do love this book right here. What is the Super Bowl? It is a longer book, so you could just read different chapters if you wanted to. It's also a great one for um, some of your higher first grade students or second grade students to keep in their book bin during this time for them to go ahead and read. And I like that it has some real life photographs. There's also this video that I found right here, which shares some fun facts about the Super Bowl for kids. And in my monthly writing unit that I just put out for February, the same one that has those Groundhog Day activities, I also have a few lessons on the Super Bowl where students can compare and contrast what the Super Bowl used to look like in 1960 67 during that first Super Bowl versus now. It is a much larger event now, so I think it's fun for students to see what it used to be like and compare it to what it is now. And if you're looking for a little craft and some other fun writing activities, I do have this mini unit with a little football player craft and students can predict who they think will win the Super Bowl and some other fun things like what would their touchdown dance look like and a few other fun writing prompts. And last but not least, the third Monday every year in February is President's Day. So this this can be a fun time to talk about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, whose birthdays we celebrate on President's Day. And for this holiday, I really like to use this book right here. It's If I Were President by Katherine Steyer. And in this book, it kind of goes over the responsibilities of being a president, what presidents can and cannot do. And it's a fun way for students to kind of put themselves in the president's seat and think, what is something I would do if I were president? I tried to emphasize that as the president, while it may be fun to think about how you can make your life better and make all these rules for yourself, you do wanna think about your friends and family and the people that voted for you and try to make the country better and make rules for them as well. So this way students are kind of not thinking just selfishly, they can have a little fun with that, but then they also can think of some rules or laws they would put in place to help everyone. In my February writing unit, I do have a bunch of differentiated sheets like this one right here that says as president I and I have words like promise, duty, responsibility, help where they can go ahead and express something they might do as the president of the United States using some important vocabulary. Also, Brain Pop Jr. has a great video talking about the roles and responsibilities of the president. So if you have a subscription to Brain Pop Jr., you can throw on one of these videos as well. So there you have a bunch of February themed ideas and activities. Everything I mentioned in this video, I will link down below. February happens to be filled with a bunch of fun holidays from Groundhog's Day, the Winter Olympics, the Super Bowl, President's Day. There's even um, the first Saturday of every February is ice cream for breakfast day. So that's another fun one. But I hope you gained some fun ideas for your own students in this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.